frequency and what is platform independence, right? So once again, uh, we will just do a little comparison so that uh, you know the concept will be crystal clear. So let me introduce uh, the platform dependent con dependency concept in C C plus plus. Uh, let us assume that whenever you are writing a code in C or C plus plus, always the the code that is being uh, written by the developers are nothing but the source code, right? Uh, source code is a code that is understandable by the what? Source code is a code that is understood. It is a high level programming code. I mean, it is understandable by the humans. So let us assume that I have simple, I have simply written a source code like uh, I have taken two inputs. It is not really a source code of C language. Uh, we are just assuming that, assuming our requirements. I have, uh, I am passing integer A, I am passing integer B as 30, and uh, you know, so I want to do the sum of these two numbers. Right? Integer C equal to A plus B. So out, output should be 30. But this is a, this is not a code, this is a pseudo code. We are just assuming that uh, you know this is our input thing and uh, we have to get this output. Right? So I have written this pseudo code in the C programming language. So after writing a code in the C programming language, I have to make sure that the file is getting saved with .c extension. Right? Please make sure that the file is getting saved with .c extension. This is how we have to save when you write a code in C programming language. For Java, it is dot Java extension. I hope uh, you remember this, uh, this concept. For C, it is dot C extension. After saving the file with dot C extension, uh, this code needs to go through the compilation stage, right? This code needs to be compiled. In order to do, in order to uh, go through the compilation stage, so this is a compilation stage. What compilation stage does? Actually, it performs the compilation. It means if there are any errors in this code, there are any other errors in this code, the compiler is going to throw that error and uh, it, will, it will ensure that the code is getting compiled without any errors. Right? The job of the compiler is to make sure that the code is error free. That is, that, that is its first job. At the same time, the second job is it is going to convert the the dot dot c file to a machine understandable code. So what do you, what do you mean by that? It's just like this. After the compilation stage, this dot c file will get converted directly into a machine understandable language. So what do you mean by a machine understandable language? Machine understands only zeros and ones. This is how uh, the high level language will get converted to low level language. Right? This is what the, com uh, the compiler does. Whenever a code is written by a developer, the code needs to you know, go through the compilation stage. Compilation stage, in the compilation stage, it has a compiler internally. This compiler will check if the code is error free. Right? The second thing is it is also going to check, uh, you know, it is also going to convert the source code into the machine understandable code. The machine understandable code in the sense for C and C language, it is, it is going to be dot, it is going to generate dot exe file. Right? The dot C file has been converted into dot exe file. This is dot C file. So this dot c file will go through the compilation uh, stage. Right? After the compilation stage, it will get con converted to dot exe file. So it is nothing but the high level language is getting converted into lower level language. As simple as that. Right? We can say this as high level language. High level language is nothing but uh, human understandable language. level language or we can also say it as source code we can uh, the terminologies that we can use for the source code 
or the code that is developed by the developer. Right? So this is it. So this is low level language. Or machine language. Right? Here when you when you talk about C or C plus plus, if you are writing a code in the Windows operating system, just imagine that you have a system and this system is supporting Windows OS. You have a computer, just an assumption. You are writing a code in your computer, and this computer uh, is designed for Windows operating system. Right? So you are writing the uh, source code in this machine, Windows operating system. So let me write it as Windows OS. Right? Let me write Windows OS. So when you talk about C, uh, the Windows, uh, since you are writing it on the Windows operating system, the .c file will be converted to a machine language, right? This machine language is specific to Windows operating system, right? So since you are writing Windows operating system, this .exe file, this machine language uh, is converted, I mean, uh, the compiler will convert uh, the .c file to the machine language. That is understandable by Windows operating system. So I can write it, uh, I can write it here like this. Compiler Water to is understandable right? Windows machine or Windows OS right so from here you know compilation stage is completed so we got the machine code this machine code uh, top support this machine code is a language which language the language that is that can be understandable by the Windows operating system because since we are using Windows operating system Obviously, the .exe file is going to be a language, machine language that can be understandable by the Windows operating system. But in the Java, something was happening in the Java. In Java, in between the compiler and the machine language, there is a, what we call it as, uh, we have a section called uh, JVM. So in C and C++, we don't have the JVM. In Java, there is a component called JVM. That JVM actually converts the byte code into machine understand language but here there is no concept of jvm in c programming language must understand that and after this uh, it will go through the execution execution phase so this is what i call it as execution phase uh, this is how the ex execution phase looks like let me write it here So this is uh, execution is always uh, in C or C++ language, it is always taken care by C engines, right? C engine uh, is a component it is available in the C programming language, the C software, right? We call it as C engines. If a, you can just remember these terminologies, uh, since we are uh, running Java, so these terminologies can be remembered only for the comparison purpose. It's called C engine. The C engine actually converts the machine code and you know it executes the machine code to get the relevant output. So here we get the output. So the output is going to be what? The output is going to be 30 because our uh, pseudo logic pseudo code says that we have passed two numbers and uh, you know the output of the uh, we want the sum of these two numbers it means 30 plus 10 is equal to 40. This is what uh, gets displayed in the system. So let's go back to the question. The question says uh, why C and C++ are platform dependent. That's why uh, C and C++ are platform dependent program language, right? So will this uh, high level architecture, uh, is this high level diagram justifies the, uh, the actual question which is why C and C++ are platform dependent programming language? 
Yes, it does. It does justification because if you choose Windows operating system, you know, the compilation phase directly converts the source code to a machine language you know, that is understandable of Windows operating system. For example, in future, if I am trying to share this .exe file, right? This is a .exe file. In future, uh, let us say that uh, I have, uh, you know, I have tried to. I want to share this .exe file uh, to my friend, right? So let us say that my friend is using a different operating system. So my friend is using an operating system uh, that is not Windows OS. He is using a Mac operating system, right? Let us say Mac OS. If he try, if he tries to uh, perform the execution, the execution will not be completed because the machine language here, the uh, converted machine language, I mean the converted source code and the machine language uh, that was uh, created with the help of Windows operating system is not going to get supported in the Mac operating system because Mac does not understand this language. Why Mac will not understand this language? Mac OS will not understand the language because uh, this language is specific for Windows operating system. So I cannot uh, you know, transfer this .exe file to my friend over the network. And he cannot perform the execution. He cannot able to reproduce the same output. That is a drawback with C and C++. Right? If it is uh, like, you know, if the machine code is developed or, re or produced in the Windows operating system, you can uh, able to uh, run this machine code or run this .exe file in the Windows operating system itself. You cannot you know, uh, jump the platforms. So here it is what is happening, we are jumping the platform. We are trying to transfer this code to a different over a network to a different person who is uh, operating on a different operating system. If it tries to perform the execution, the execution will be failed. That's why it is called as platform dependent. Right. Just type us in the chat box if my you know answer is crystal clear or if you need any more explanation, we can proceed with this. I mean I can just type us in the chat box. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello. Okay, 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 okay. So this is why C and C programming languages are platform dependent programming language because when when you write a code you can you can perform the compilation and execution on the same code. So how can I uh, represent this? Uh, you know, uh, we want to we want to talk about some theory. The theory we can clearly say that. Let's write some theory for C and C plus plus. Then the compilation and the execution can be performed on the same operating system. Operating system or uh, the same platform. Then programming languages are called as platform dependent programming languages. Yes. Example C A plus plus. Or we can also say that uh, if any programming language allows its application to perform compilation execution in the same operating system, it is called as Shutworth or Sim. Right? 
So this is the high level diagram for the platform independency, dependency concept for C and C++. Now, once again, let us write the, let us uh, draw the high level diagram for the Java as well. So for the better understanding. So in Java, the concept of writing the source code is going to be same as the same as the C programming language. So I'm just trying to simplify it. The concept of writing the source code is uh, same for uh, you know Java language as well. Let us assume that. Uh, right. So instead of uh, dot C, I mean the extension is dot C in the C or C plus plus, but here in Java the extension is going to be dot Java. When in order to save the source code, we need to use uh, the dot java extension this all we know because we have already dis discussed this a lot of times dot java extension let me uh, move this little bit down so this is dot java extension and uh, so even in java compilation has to be done because compilation will take care of the errors as well as it will take care of a little conversion in java the compiler will not directly convert to machine language like in c like in c if you see the comp after the compilation the machine code is generated as soon as the compilation is done but in java machine code will not be generated first it will be generating a file in the name of dot class this is the major difference you must you must uh, you know Remember this difference. This dot class file. This dot class file, right? The dot class file is a file. Uh, in other words, we can call this dot class file as a byte code. We have already seen this. Secondly, we call it as intermediate code. Thirdly, we can also call it as a uh, uh, dot class file. So dot class file looks like, you know, even uh, you cannot understand this as well as the machine also cannot understand this. This is, that's why it is called as an intermediate code, right? So dot class file is something, you know, it cannot be recognized, it cannot be decrypted. If you open the dot class file, you may not un understand this because it contains a lot of symbols. A lot of symbols like one minute. It contains a lot of symbols. It contains zeros, ones. You, know? you cannot really decipher this. You cannot even really. Uh, understand this right this dot class file will be sent to jvm so here's the catch this dot class file is going to be sent to jvm let us say that i have uh, i can have three jvms right so This is one JVM and this is other JVM. This is another JVM. So the first one is JVM for Windows. Second one is JVM for Mac. Third one is JVM for Linux. So 
So this generated dot class file is a common dot class file. You can send this dot class file individually you now to each and every JVM. So what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that, sir? If you ask me, you can send this dot class file to JVM for Windows. This dot class file you can send it to JVM for Mac. And again, this dot class file can be sent to JVM for Linux. This JVM is responsible to convert the dot class file to the respective machine language. For example, this JVM will convert the machine language. Uh, I mean, it will uh, it is going to convert this dot class file to a machine language that is understandable by Windows machine. Right? So this is a Windows machine language. Just try to imagine that zeros and ones. And uh, the second one is, uh, you know, this dot class file will convert to a language that is understandable by Mac. This is convert to a language that is understandable by Linux. What are the languages? It is going to have ones and zeros in a in an order uh, that the machine understands. Nothing else. This is the machine language for uh, Windows. This is a machine language for uh, Mac. This is a machine language for Linux. Windows, Mac, Linux. So uh, this is the execution phase. This phase is the execution phase. This is the execution phase. So, and after this, it is going to all the three machines. Is going to generate the same output. No matter, you know, how was the uh, I mean, uh, on which platform the code was written. It is going to have the same output. Thirty. I mean, uh, 40. Me, this is not 30, this is 40. Forty. Forty. If you compare these two diagrams, so the major comparison starts from uh, after the compilation phase. The machine language is directly generated in the C or C++ programming language. Whereas in Java, instead of generating the machine language directly, the file is actually getting converted to dot class file. And again, this dot class file is sent to the JVM. If I'm using Windows, it's Windows JVM. I can send the share the dot class file to a person who is using Mac JVM. I can share this dot class file to a person who is using Linux JVM. So even though we are we can uh, we are sharing this dot class file to three different JVM, the output will not be impacted. The output is going to be same. So the thesis of platform independence is achieved in Java. So we can conclude that in Java, because of this intermediate code concept, only because of this concept, is able to achieve platform independence. So this dot class file or this intermediate code concept is not there in C or C++ programming language, right? That's why C and C++ programming languages are not platform independent programming languages. Instead, we have to say it as platform dependent programming language. Because its dot .exe file can be used on the same platform. You cannot uh, use this .exe file to a different platform because if you try to use that, you get error. Execution will not happen. Execution will not happen because it is dependent. This .exe file is dependent to Windows operating system. Dependency is there. This is completely different, dependent to Windows operating system. You cannot change the operating system and you cannot perform the execution. You get error. That's why uh, it is always called as platform independent, platform dependent programming language. Let's try basic. So, if anyone is asking in the future, uh, like uh, directly, they don't ask you. First, they will ask you why C C C plus plus platform dependent. How did Java achieve the platform independent programming concept? Concept of platform independence. So, this diagram, the simple diagram that you can remember. So, you, one more thing I need to put it here. So if you understand this, writing programs is, uh, writing Java programs is very easy. So you need to understand how the program is uh, being written, how it is getting converted internally and how the out output is getting displayed. 
this concept is very very important because in future we talk about compilation errors we talk about runtime errors we also talk about jvm separately for jvm we have almost uh, you know 10 hours of class only for jvm right and we have uh, uh, we will also talk about uh, you know pointers concept why pointers concept is not uh, available in java so for pointers concept to understand the pointers concept we must understand this uh, high level diagram but just remember this diagram so you can future if you are coming across this question it will be very easy to answer just type s in the chat box if you have understood them. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, let me write you. So try to complete your notes uh, on the very same day. Don't do maintain the consistency because these things are really going to help you. Any programming page is compilation in one machine and execution in another machine or in the same machine. They are called as platform in the programming language. So I would like to ask you one uh, a simple question. So whenever you are uh, writing a programming languages, so we are communicating with the computer with high level code. So Java is something like it's an high level code, isn't it? But computer understands only the machine language, which is uh, basically like uh, in two forms, one is zeros and ones. You don't understand either language. It, it can understand zero, it can understand one, it can understand sequence of these num any numbers, any shuffle numbers, right? So what does this machine language actually means? Right? Why computers, uh, if you ask me, only computers understand machine language, no. All the electronic products, like all the mobile phones, any electronic product that you take in the market, they do understand only the binary representation, which is zeros and ones. What is happening internally? How these values are getting deciphered? We will we will have a we will just look into it because in future in the bit manipulation topic we will be discussing a lot about this. Right? So first, let me share this. Uh, let me save this file. We will go back to the new topic. So, what is a machine language? So, this will be a little interesting. Please focus here. Why the conversion is happening internally? Why the Java representation or C program representation or anything that we type in the system is getting converted into machine language? to understand this let me introduce a small analogy uh, let us assume that uh, you know uh, in previous days uh, the communication happens one, one person wants to communicate with another person they use electricity so here, here, here i am not talking about electricity here i am talking here, I'm trying to bringing you the concept in right the previous days they use electricity 
to perform the communication sir what do you mean by electricity how the communication happens with the help of electricity let's assume that uh, you know i have a I have a switch just assume this is a switch okay which and uh, i have a wired connection this is how a wire looks like and uh, on the other end i am placing a bulb just imagine that this is a bulb and this is a switch so to close this circuit so the circuit is closed so i can perform two operations with this switch isn't it i can uh, i can i can i can turn this on or i can turn this on right i can perform two operation with one switch so in 19 in 1800s what happens you know uh, see uh, whenever two people wants to perform the communication let us imagine that there is a there is a power, there is one person person is here this is a person and this is another person right this person uh, the person let us name is name this person as person a let us name this person as person b right this is uh, called a person person a and this is what person b person so this person is living in the city this person is living in the city right is living in the city he is uh, this person here is living in a, in a thick forest he is a forest officer it is a forest officer whose duty is to make sure that the forest is not getting poached or you know the element uh, animals are not getting hunted that is his responsibility and he is uh, in charge like uh, you know this person b is a manager of person a so if something goes wrong in the forest he has to communicate to the person who is living in the city so that he can get some help for example let us assume that let us say that uh, you know poachers or what we call it as hunters hunters are hunting down the forest so he has to communicate he has to inform that he has to inform that that to his officer you know to inform that he has two options one is he can turn off the light or he can turn on the light so he can perform two operations one operation is off operation communication can happen off and second one is on right so they have a code word the person a and person b they both have a code word the code word is nothing but if something goes wrong If everything is okay, please the switch off. Everything is okay. If everything is okay. Please make sure that ensure that the switch is off. If you are in danger, if the forest is in danger, if the forest is getting attacked by the poachers, okay. So it is called as emergency. So please turn the switch off. In emergency situation, please turn the switch off. right so there is a moment so the switch remains off always it remains off because the, there is no emergency situation so in that case you know, we can say that one minute since there is no emergency situation Uh, switch is always going to be off. If there is no emergency, then uh, the switch should be turned on. I mean, if there is no emergency, the switch should remain on. And if there is any emergency, the switch has to be turned on. Right? Let us assume that uh, the person A is facing an emergency. The forest is being hunted by poachers. Let we call it as hunters. Right? What he does, he will pass the, he will turn on the switch. Right? It should be turned on. 
So if the switch turned on, and again, uh, this is how the communication happens. How the communication happens? Uh, the electricity will be passed. We all know this. This is a simple, uh, simple logic, simple understanding. Electricity will be passed. Right? And the lights turn on. If this person get to see this light turned on, he understand that, you know, the forest is under attack. So he will send the help. Right? So how many inputs this A person can, can uh, you know, perform with this single switch? He can perform two operations. One is off, second one is on. Isn't it? So uh, these uh, switch ports can be used to perform two operations. We can also say that we can send two messages. We can also say that, uh, uh, you know, we can pass two messages. We can also say that uh, the sign uh, we can pass. If it is off, it means the value is going to be zero. If it is on, the value is going to be one. We can also say that zero is also called as false. We can also say that you know, one is also called as true. We can say that uh, false is also known. Two is yes. one switch represents two messages. We can pass two messages in one switch. Simple messages of one. If you want, it means you are on, on, on the forest is under account. That is one message. If you are, that is the second message, isn't it? Right. So this uh, thing is uh, this is how. There was a rapid paradigm shift in the computer programming language. The computer, uh, uh, it created a paradigm shift where the computer programming has started to evolve. What do I mean by that? So in this switch, I can pass, either I can turn it on or I, I can turn it off. If it is off, I am saying it is on, the forest, forest is under attack. So this thing, this switch thing, is, is it is rep representing one bit of memory. From computer point of view, this switch thing is one bit of memory. When someone is asking you about the one, what is, what do you mean by a bit of memory means? A bit of memory is the smallest piece of storage that you can have in your machine. This smallest piece of storage. One bit is the smallest piece of storage that, that anyone can have in their computer machine or electro, any electronic machine. Right? For example, let us say that in future, if I want to upgrade this communication, upgrade this communication to a different level. Right? I will be having, I will be having another switch like this. Right? Again, I will be having a wire. Right? Again, I will be having a bulb. Right? Now I have two switches. Right? With these two switches, I can able to perform four different types of operation. Right? First operation is I can uh, I can first switch I can turn off. Second switch, second switch I can keep it on. Second switch on, second time on off, third time on on, fourth time off off. Right? From this uh, from with two switches, I can able to perform four. I can able to pass four signals. First time it can be off on. Means if it is off, uh, this bulb is going to remain off. If it is on, this is going to remain. So for this specific uh, off on, I can keep a different code message. If it is off, if it is on. If the first switch is off, if the second switch is on, I can make my uh, the person who is living in the city to understand that if the output is zero one. You can keep a different code code word for this, right? I can you can you can say that uh, instead of uh, OK emergency, you can also add another code word like uh, you know uh, like raining, right? So if it is on on, it's like one one. On is nothing but one one. You can use a code word like you no. Know, you can something say like uh, you know. Forest, forest is under fire, right? So to optimize, we are just optimizing the communication. 
we have just increased the one bit to two bit we have added two bits the two bits i can able to pass two values right with the three bits i can able to send uh, what we call it as uh, you know three uh, three combination of uh, inputs and uh, i can able to send eight signals the three bits let me show you that so if it is one bit I can I can either turn it on or I can either turn it off, right? If it is two bit, right? I can perform four operations. One is on on off off. The last one is off on. So with the three bits. Three bits. I can able to perform eight operations. You can decrypt that, like on, on, on. I can pass eight combination of signals, on, off, on. Something it goes like this, right? So here, if you try to uh, observe this, try to focus here. This one bit is. Uh, they call it is one bit. It means I am using one transistor in my machine. Transistor. They say my system is my support. My system supports one bit of data. It means my system has one transistor. This electrical circuit has got converted to electronic circuit. Circuit. This electronic circuit is nothing but a transistor. Transistor also take the. Input in the form of switches and delivers output in the form of a signal. It uses electrical signals internally. If you take RAM, uh, if you take your RAM is uh, your RAM for the explanation for explanatory purpose. Let us imagine that you have a RAM in your system. It supports uh, uh, eight bits of memory: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It supports eight bits of memory. It means your RAM has eight transistors, right? So these transistors are very small. We cannot even say see, uh, see this with our naked eye. The transistor very small. They are very tiny. Uh, in a small chip, in a small microchip like this, there may be one billion of one billions of transistors. So transistor takes input in the form of uh, zeros or ones and delivers output in the form of zeros and ones. This is the way of machine machine language communication. Just type S in the chat box if you have understood this basic concept. This is something that is very much basic. Just try to uh, put S in the chat box. We will go deeper into it so that we will understand what is the machine language. This is what internally they use in the you know, CPUs. Everything is uh, everything is about electricity. So they they create a design an electronic circuit. That electronic circuit takes a signal in the form of zeros and ones. Or the electronic circuit has to be turned on or it has to be turned off. If it is turning off, it is passing a. Uh, I mean uh, the light will not be eliminated. I mean blown. If it is turning on, the light will be blown. It means the communication is happening between. Uh, The sender and the receiver. Just type S in the chat box if you have understood till now. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So here, what I am trying to say is, so this is how the communication happened in the nineteen nineties, nineteen nineteen nineties, hundred years ago. they started to apply the same logic for to develop computers right so to apply the same logic the, there is a problem with this logic what is the problem is whatever you want to say to an electrical system you can communicate only with zeros and ones is it you can only perform the communication with the binary representation what if i want to uh, pass uh, a number like uh, you know 500 or what if i want to pass a number like 108 it 
is a decimal number these numbers are blindly understandable by humans isn't it these numbers cannot be understandable by I mean, operating system what we call as machines so this decimal number of base 10 has to get converted to a binary number right we want to pass 500 as a signal with this particular logic with this electrical circuit i need to first of all convert this 500 to a binary number so after i will teach about uh, conversion of binary to decimal and decimal to binary let us say that it has it is throwing us some values like something like this okay so this value i can uh, i can use uh, how many switches 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 bits so i can use 11 switches 11 bulbs i can use i can uh, communicate the information to the other end and again they have to decrypt the signal and they have to convert this uh, binary to decimal let if you see this if you observe this concept you can come to a conclusion so yeah. so we are performing the conversion isn't it first of all we are uh, we want to send binary as a message we are actually trying to convert this into binary binary number. This binary number will be used in the electrical circuit. Right? And again, the other person who is receiving this signal will be converting back into the decimal number. Right? So in modern world, this conversion will be taken care of by compilers. Right? So compiler does this conversion in the model world. So compiler what it what it does, you talk about compiler. It actually uh, takes human language and it converts into machine language. Machine language is nothing but zeros and ones. You may ask, you may ask me, sir, okay, uh, if numbers can be converted to, before is a number, we can convert it to, before a decimal number, I mean binary number. What if you want to convert a uh, string like I? Right, we can perform conversion with strings as well. Strings, each and every letter represent an ASCII value, like something pi, uh, one, or you know, some some ASCII values. Again, this number will be converted to binary. What about uh, videos? Videos will also be converted into binary. Audio, audio will be converted into binary. Any human representation, audio, video, uh, any signal, any sounds, any uh, you know letters, numbers, any characters can be converted to a binary representation so this is just simple an introduction right we will uh, get into this uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow so that you will get to know we will we will try to understand uh, what is a what do you mean by machine language editor just type us in the chat box if you have understood till now if you have any questions questions are always open you can just uh, unmute yourself and you can ask no issues So no questions for you. Okay, no issues. Uh, let me share this. Uh, you, and again, I'm saying, uh, please don't worry about this. It's electrical circuits and all. We will discuss, uh, we will go through this more deeply. We have just given the introduction about what is a machine language. And uh, this is what the compiler does. Well, compiler is actually trying to perform the conversion in the beginning or in java if you talk about compiler java is also doing something but uh, it is not directly converting the you know, java language to a machine you don't want to write all this so this is first, just for our reference these things are not included in the notes i am not going to share this file this is for your understanding i have said that's why i have scribbled this now so Okay then, uh, we will discuss, we will see about uh, some branch sisters like MOSFET. Uh, this is not an electrical engineering class. This is a computer science class. These are some of the basic things that uh, anyone should be aware of. Awareness, little awareness required on this, so that when you write a program, you can think how an how an actual programmer thinks. You should develop that institution, institution, intuition. 
that's why i'm teaching you all this that's all for the day and uh, we will meet tomorrow right thank, thank you sir. sir thank you thank you